Hi, welcome to the Small School Districts Association Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us on this Thursday. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your cameras and microphones are off, so the panelists can't see or hear you. This presentation is being recorded. It'll be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash SSDA. This is what's called a six by six session, six schools presenting for six minutes each. You cannot possibly get all the information that you need or want from one six minute session with a school, but it can be enough and should be enough to give you an idea if you're interested in more information. So use this time to see if you have any interest in the schools that are going to present here and follow up with the contact information that's given to you to set up either a one-on-one -on -one meeting, virtual tour, find more information on the campus websites, all that stuff that you can do to, as you go through the decision process. I've gotten the housekeeping stuff out of the way, so I will get out of the way now and turn it over to our first presentation from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Good afternoon, everybody. Let me go ahead and share out my screen and let's get started. All right. Um, welcome, everyone. My name is Woody Hoshibatsu, and I'm a representative here from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Um, I was a current student with my undergraduate degree and also my master's program with the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, um, coming specifically from Hawaii. Um, so I packed my bags up um, back in the day and made my way out here to UNLV. Um, to give you an idea, UNLV is a large four-year public research institution down here in Southern Nevada. Um, we approximately have a little over 30,000 students that make up our student body here at UNLV um, with an average class size of about 21 to 22 students when, with one faculty or staff, staff member. So although we're a large four-year public institution, we do have a lot of our course sizes that are really catered towards that student interaction experience with our faculty and staff members. Now to give you a very good snapshot of UNLV, um, I do wanna bring up a little bit about our diversity. According to US News, World and Report, UNLV is ranked as the top five most diverse universities in the nation. So we have students who come from all over the world with about 72 different countries that's represented here at UNLV. UNLV is also recognized as an Asian American, Native American Pacific Islander serving institution. We're also recognized as a Hispanic serving institution and we're also recognized as a minority serving institution. Whether you're looking for opportunities to connect with different peers, maybe you're looking to run your own research on campus, we have those opportunities available for you here at UNLV. Um, I also wanna mention we have over 80 um, undergraduate majors available for our students to definitely explore into here at UNLV. Now we are fairly known for hospitality program. That's something that we definitely take pride in here in Las Vegas or within Southern Nevada where we're ranked number one in the nation and top two in the world. Our students have the opportunity to take a very generalist approach to this degree, meaning because we offer so many different electives and majors, and we have a lot of different visiting professors, students really get to immerse themselves into the different courses that we offer within the hospitality track to really build up and really explore into what they wanna gain out of our programs. We also just launched our medical school about four years ago and about a month ago, I would say, um, we just got some pretty exciting news that 60 of our students for a charter, our first charter class was able to get 100% match into our residency programs all across the country. Um, with that being said, a lot of our health science programs are now starting to kind of put into the spotlight. Um, our School of Nursing just got a $900,000 grant where we're now offering more seats for our students um, and a lot of our health science programs are now starting to move forward. Um, with that being said, with a lot of our different programs in the academic side, it's really shining in on our research opportunities here at UNLV. According to Carnegie classification, UNLV is now recognized as a tier one institution. Now we belong to the top 3% of colleges that are all across the nation with us. Um, our goal for 2025 is to become a top tier institution by finally taking the opportunity to really integrate into the city of Las Vegas with our medical school being launched off four years ago our College of Engineering consistently expanding. We're now looking for opportunities to integrate with the city of Las Vegas by providing our families and providing our communities with a lot of research advancements to move our city forward. 
Um, maybe you're a student who's not interested in research, that's okay as well. Um, we highly encourage you to take a look into our internship opportunities. Um, because we're in a city that's consistently growing, we're not in a small college town, we have those opportunities to really connect you with different employers or different internship sites for you to gain those skills for, for professional development opportunities as well. And last but not least, I do want to mention a little bit about our location. Um, there's so many things to do out here in Las Vegas as you go to school. Um, one of the really cool opportunities for our students is really to get you connected with different internships and for those professional development opportunities to really take advantage of those opportunities out here in Las Vegas as we continue to grow and expand as a city. We're looking for ways that we can incorporate our students and really provide that opportunity for that hands-on experience, um, whether it's for your professional side um, or if you're looking to get connected with different students, we have so many different opportunities available for you here at UNLV. And last thing that I do wanna mention is we do have a calendar of services. Um, we are gonna be holding a few of our virtual op outreach opportunities throughout the summer. So if maybe you're a junior uprising into senior year next year, um, we highly encourage you to take a look at our website at unlv.today forward slash events. That's UNLV today forward slash events and we would love to host you for a virtual event or for or for a virtual conversation with our admissions counselors thank you thank you very much and i'll remind everyone the q a is where you can ask questions if you have any during this session and you can if it's for a specific school just name the school in your question up next we'll hear from the university of nevada reno all right, hello everyone. So we just heard from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. So we are now going to go uh, a little bit north in the state of Nevada and granted we're actually a fair distance away from each other. And we'll talk about the University of Nevada, Reno. My name is Shaler. I am a regional admissions counselor with the university. I am also an alumna of the university as well. So I have a lot of passion and love for this university we're gonna be talking about today. If you do have any questions after the event today, do feel free to reach out to me. I am regionally based in Sacramento, maybe close to some of you here today, and I would be really happy to help you talk about the process and what it's like to be a student. And again, to put into perspective about where we're at, common misconception is that you can have a really like easy day trip to Las Vegas, but actually it's about an eight hour drive away from down south. Reno is actually 45 minutes from Lake Tahoe, only about two hours away from Sacramento and really close to the state capital of Nevada, which is Carson City. And you do get that small town college feel. Reno is called the biggest little city for a reason because the community is really involved in the university. They're going to our sporting events, but you do get some big time opportunities that I'll be talking about shortly as well. We are a tier one research institution, uh, just like a previous university before. A lot of research happening on campus. Our professors know what they're talking about, highest level degree possible in their field, whether that's a master's or a PhD. And we have a great size student body, about 18,000 undergraduates. I think it's right in the middle because we're not necessarily as small as a private university, but not per se as big as a large UC, for example. We do still maintain that personal student interaction by having an 18 to one student to faculty ratio. And I can personally attest to when you are in your higher upper division courses, you're in the class, there's about 16 other different students, your professor knows your name, they know when you're not in class. So you absolutely do get that personal experience. We are a division one school and we're a part of the Mountain West Conference. Really exciting time to be a part of it. Our football season, even though it started a little bit late this fall, was really wonderful. It's been our best season since we had Colin Kaepernick as quarterback and we do anticipate to have an even better one next year. And we do have fans in the stands. We do have a study abroad program, which I love to highlight because USAC, its headquarters is located on our campus, but it is used nationally across the country and allows you to study at over 27 different countries, 40 plus different cities. And it's easy for you to do so because a lot of the times those scholarships you have can actually easily transfer over. We do have first generation programs. I love to note we are welcoming of students and we want to let you know that I am here to help you through the admissions process, but that does not end once you're a current student. And first generation for those here is if neither of your parents have graduated from a four year institution. So navigating college is gonna be a little bit more difficult and you're gonna need maybe some assistance to actually make sure that you know you have a home at the university, which you do at the University of Nevada. And we have a lot of different programs for you to study. We have 145 plus different programs 
and none of them are impacted. And that's probably an academic term I'm throwing out here. But ultimately what that means for you is if you are accepted to the University of Nevada, you can choose to study any of our majors. They do not have separate applications. We do not have a cap on how many students are able to study biology or engineering, for example. And talking about what type of different programs we have, we have a wealth of them. These are a list of some of our colleges and colleges are where our academic majors and minors are housed. So for example, starting from the top, our College of Agriculture, Biotechnology, Natural Resources, or CABNR for short. Academics really love to have acronyms, so that will be a common theme you'll find. That's where you're gonna find our Agricultural Sciences major, our Pre-Vet Science program, our Environmental Science, our Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, for example. I do like to highlight at the bottom, we do have an interdisciplinary college, in which case, if you're not quite sure what to study, you can come in undeclared and that's totally okay. Our College of Engineering is ranked top 10% across the nation. We have a four-year education program where you not only get your education degree in four years, but you're also a licensed teacher as well. We have a wealth of opportunities on campus. We have over 300 different clubs, and we also ensure that our students do have career and internship opportunities. These are some examples of employers that are coming to our campus for our college and career fairs. Some of these employers are actually based in the Reno area, so they don't actually have to travel far to get that experience. Tesla, for example, has a Giga factory about a half an hour away from campus. IBM has home in the area. We do have Patagonia, renowned health, works with our medical students and our nursing students as well. As far as what it looks like to go through the application process, we do have our application opening every September. You're going to go to unr.edu slash apply. So you, we are not on the common application. It's really quick and easy, though. It takes about 10 minutes to fill that application out. And once you do so, do make sure to send us your transcripts. We have any seniors here right now. Our application is still open. We would love for you to apply. If we have any juniors or below, expect that application to open up in September or so. Other things to keep in mind is if you do want to visit campus, we are an open campus. We've been offering tours since last summer and we will continue to do so. We would love to have you. If you're unable to make it though, we do have virtual opportunities. So feel free to go to unr.edu slash visit, ask a question in the Q&A, they all have to answer that as well. Follow us on our Instagram, we'll give you some more information and as always, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, thanks for being here and I hope maybe see some of you on campus. Thank you very much. She mentioned the Q&A, use that to ask questions of any of our representatives. Also check out the chat where the reps are sending you info like contact info, links to their, their websites, that sort of thing. Very helpful information there. Up next, let's hear from the representative from Kansas State University. Hi everyone, my name is Palmer Roman. I'm an admissions representative with Kansas State. Very excited to be here with you all today. I graduated from K-State myself in May of 2019 with my degree in athletic training and a minor in kinesiology. Loved it so much and now I help recruit students to university hoping that they find the same, um, the perfect opportunity to find the college for them, find their best fit. But if you're not familiar with K-State, I wanna tell you a little bit more about it. Uh, K-State is a large four-year public research institution and we're located in the heart of the country. So we are located in Manhattan, Kansas, which is one of the consistently top rank, rank, ranked college towns in the country, and it's currently ranked in the top three. We have students from all over the 50 states and over 100 different countries. And then here on the next slide are a couple of fast facts. We have um, um, Eight, to about 22,000 students in total and about 18,000 of those are gonna be undergraduate students, but we still have an 18 to one student faculty ratio, which means not only are you gonna to get to know your professors, more importantly, they're gonna to get to know you. Um, K-State has been ranked as one of the top 10 best schools in the nation by the Princeton Review. And here are some examples on this slide, um, but for happiest, we have the happiest students, um, counseling services, health services, quality of life, athletic facilities, and our town gown relationship. Um, we offer 16 Division I sports, and students get to cheer on the Wildcats doing the number one pregame tradition in the Big 12. But some of my favorite things about Manhattan when I was there was the Insane Sunsets dinner on our campus entertainment district called Aggieville, time out by the lake, and then again getting to cheer on the Big 12 Wildcats on game day. Uh, but as a member of the Big 12 Conference, K-State fans get to enjoy a number of different varsity athletic sports. You'll have to visit one day for a football game or a basketball game. But our undergraduate experience is unmatched, and you'll find that the world is at your fingertips through internships, education abroad opportunities, and courses taught from a local or a, a 
from a global perspective, I should say. And then going into our uh, academics, we have nine different academic colleges. Here you can see it's agriculture, architecture, planning and design, arts and sciences, College of Business, College of Education, Engineering, Health and Human Sciences. And then we have a separate campus called Polytechnic or Technology and Aviation, if you're wanting to become a pilot or some more of those technology-based majors. And then we also have a veterinary, a veterinary medicine college. But we offer over 250 different majors and over 50 different minors. And you can also come to K-State Undecided. It's called our Open Options Track, where you can take the time to figure out what you wanna do um, as a major and as a career um, and in Manhattan and at K-State. Um, but for our other side of the experience, we know that academics is just one part. We have undergraduate research. A lot of our professors are already doing research. So you can get connected as early as your freshman year. We also offer over 500 different clubs and organizations. Some of those might be based on academ academics. Some of those might focus on um, leadership opportunities. Others might focus on fun stuff like Star Wars Club, Skydiving Club. Um, our student governing association, things like that. And then we also offer Greek life. And then additionally, I know mentioned earlier, our ed education abroad opportunities. We have connections with over 85 different countries. Students can get to choose to go on a faculty led trip for 10 days, a summer, a semester, a year. You get to really pick your, uh, your experience while you're at K-State. On the other side of things, of course, we wanna talk about um, financial opportunities. So when you apply to K-State, you automatically are applying for our university scholarships. So you'll be able to go on, self-report your information, and that's gonna be, um, we have opportunities for in-state students, out-of-state students, and students that have had a parent or grandparent graduate from K-State. We also had test optional scholarships this year, of course, because of COVID. And then we also tell students to apply for the free application for federal student aid or the FAFSA. And then once you're admitted to the university, you're able to um, apply for our K-State scholarship network, which is every other scholarship that is available to students. Um, it it comes every year, so not only are you going to getting are you getting to apply for that your first year, you get to apply continuously during your time at K State. So that's something to look and take advantage of while you're here. So if you are thinking about applying to K State after this, um, you we are on the Common App, so it's something that I want to mention. It's very popular for a lot of out of state students, but we also have a native app that you can apply in. Um, the only our admissions requirements are either having a 3.25 high school GPA or a 21 ACT or a 1060 SAT. And even if you don't meet these requirements, we have a reconsideration process where it's a more holistic approach to your application. And then for transfer students, you just have to have a 2.0 uh, college GPA. And then lastly, I hope that you learned a little bit about K-State. And if you're wanting to, we are offering on-campus visits where you get to meet with academics, take a student-led campus tour, and you can find those opportunities on our website at k-state slash visit. And if you're not able to make it to Manhattan, Kansas, you can also visit us virtually. But for more information, you can email us at apply at k-state.edu or you can call us at 785-532-1521. But again, very excited to have talked to you a little bit more about K-State and thanks for being here. Thank you very much. And again, the Q&A is where you can ask questions to our representatives. Up next, New Mexico State University. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Susan Metzler and I'm a senior admissions advisor with New Mexico State University. And I'm really excited to be here today to tell you a little, a little bit more about our school. Okay, here we go. All right, New Mexico State University is located in Las Cruces, New Mexico, which is in the southern part of the state of New Mexico. And even though we are located in the desert and we have over 300 days of sunshine per year, we are located in a large river valley. So we have a really beautiful green campus. We have lots of grass, we have lots of trees. It's a beautiful, you know, uh, residential state university. Um, and it, we, we actually experience four seasons in Las Cruces, New Mexico, where we get an average of two inches of snow a year, which is pretty fun. Um, we are a research university. We are the land grant university of New Mexico. We're also a NASA space grant college. Um, one thing I do want to point out really quickly about our application is we are still accepting applications for seniors. And when this is over, I am going to put my information in the chat and any student who is interested in filling out a free application, you can just contact me and I can waive your application fee for you today. Um, but we are a highly ranked university. 
Um, we're very well known for our engineering programs and our agricultural programs, as well as all of our other academic programs. Like I said, we're in Las Cruces. It is in the southern part of the state. Here is a map right here where you can kind of see where we're located compared to the rest of the Southwest. Our largest major city is El Paso, Texas. It is about 45 minutes away. Students from out of state who are interested in flying into campus, we do have a free shuttle service that will pick you up at the El Paso airport if you make a reservation for it. So while first year students are allowed to have cars on campus, it is not required as it is a residential campus where students live on campus, um, lots of people on bikes, longboards, um, diff all different things nearby. So we, while you don't need a car on our campus, you are welcome to have one as a first year student. Las Cruces is a really safe community. It is a college town. Um, we're located in a beautiful location right up against the Oregon Mountains where um, mountain biking is popular, hiking, camping, all of those fun things are really, really popular. And the city of Las Cruces has a lot of festivals and um, twice a week they have a big farmer's market where they close down streets and have bands and food trucks and all kinds of fun things. So while it is a smaller city and smaller town, there are a lot of things to do in Las Cruces. We do have students from all 50 states and 89 countries. We do have over 200 student clubs and organizations. We do have Greek life. We have just over 14,000 students on our campus. So we're a nice medium-sized university. Um, I like the size of our school because, well, we're big enough that you have a lot of opportunities. Um, you get to meet a lot of new people. When you're walking around campus, you do see familiar faces. When you're in class, you see people that you know. We have um, an average class size of only 27, so we do have those smaller class sizes. And we um, are part of Division I uh, Athletics. We're part of the Western Athletic Conference. Now, um, cost, we're a great value university. For students who are residents of Colorado and Arizona, they get a huge discount that actually means that they pay in-state tuition rates. For students who are out of other, from other states, um, we are part of the Western Undergraduate Exchange, the WUI. So if you're in the, a Western state, you automatically get our WUI rate. If you're from another state, we do have out-of-state competitive discounts that will actually bring you down to two um, in-state tuition rates with a GPA of at least a 3.5 and an ACT of a 21. So we are test optional, but if you do take the ACT or the SAT, we do strongly recommend that you do submit those scores to us because they can only help you. On top of our tuition discounts, we also have merit scholarships that students can earn. So um, we, some schools won't stack a discount with a scholarship, but we will actually do both. So we are a really nice affordable option for out-of-state students. This kind of shows you some of our prices. As you can see, um, a student who is in one of the WUI states, their current tuition and fees, $11,297. I'm sorry, $11,279. I'm being a little distracted there, so I do apologize. These are our six academic colleges. We have our College of Agriculture, Consumer, and Environmental Sciences, known as ACES. We have our College of Arts and Sciences, our College of Business, Education, Engineering. We do have Aerospace, um, Health and Social Services, where we do have nursing. And we have the Conroy Honors College, which is the oldest honors college in the state of New Mexico. Um, none of our majors are impacted. So if you're interested in studying something like computer sciences, when you apply and are admitted, you can study computer sciences. We don't have a cap. Um, we do have over 200 student organizations, like I mentioned before. And we have our D1 sports. We are the Aggies. We love our Aggies. Um, with your student ID, you get in free to any of our athletic events. And this is my contact information. And I am going to put my information in the chat. So you can always reach out to me. And like I said, I can waive application fees today for seniors. Um, our application will open on July 1st for juniors. So I hope to hear from you and I hope to see you soon. Thanks. Thank you very much. Questions, use the Q&A button for our reps. And if you have any questions for them and also check out the chat for the information being sent to you from our representatives, as was just mentioned. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from New Mexico Tech.
Hello, everyone. We're glad you can join us today. I know myself and the rest of my colleagues wish we were meeting in person, but I guess virtually is the next best thing. So a little bit about New Mexico Tech. We are a small science and engineering university. We're located in Socorro, which is right in the middle of the state of New Mexico, an hour south of Albuquerque. At New Mexico Tech, we are definitely proud of our rankings. We're ranked number one in a lot of different um, science options as well as our engineering. We're ranked number one for best college in New Mexico for academics and best value. Ranked number four for best Hispanic serving university in America. And we're always in the top 1% nationally for our physics program and our engineering. So some history and facts about New Mexico Tech. We were founded in 1889 as New Mexico School of Mines. We then changed our name in 1951 to New Mexico Institute of Mining and Technology. That is still our official name today, but we go by New Mexico Tech for short. So we've been around a very long time. We offer bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees in science and engineering. A uh, fun fact about New Mexico Tech, 98% uh, of our full-time faculty have their PhD, so you're really learning from the best. A lot of our faculty is participating in research, and they are required to have a student's name on the research that they're working on. So it's very easy to get a jump start in research as early as your freshman year. Um, like I said earlier, we are located in a small rural town just an hour south of Albuquerque. So if you're looking for the big city life, it's only an hour away. Our admission requirements, we do require a 2.5 GPA, a 21 on the ACT or a 1070 on the SAT. This year we were test optional. So if you are a senior and still planning on applying, we are only requiring um, your official transcript only. And then we also honor dual credit AP credit. So if you have any questions about those, definitely contact me and I can let you know what's gonna directly transfer over to New Mexico Tech. So we are a small university, a little under 1,700 students on campus. Undergraduate is a little over 1,200. Um, student faculty ratio is 12 to 1. So you really get to know um, your professors really well. They'll know you on a first name basis. Also, you'll really get to know your peers. Um, they pretty much become family. Um, it's really a tight knit community here at New Mexico Tech. Our average class size is about 25 students. Um, your largest class would be freshman chemistry, and a lot of our students are testing out of that due to AP credit um, and IB credit and dual credit. And our smallest class size would be one, and that's an independent study, so working on some type of research with the professor. We do have a lot of research opportunities on campus. It's pretty much abundant. Like I said, if you're proactive and get involved, you can definitely get a research gig as early as your freshman year. An average lab class size is 12 students. And here's our College of Engineering, all of our programs. Um, we are a very hands-on university, so they compete in a lot of engineering design team competitions. Also, you will have a junior and senior design project associated, whichever department you're in. We also have accelerated programs, so five-year bachelor's and master's degree options, and that's indicated by the asterisk. Our um, top majors right now are mechanical engineering. We do have options in aerospace as well as explosives in that degree. Um, computer science, computer engineering, and electrical engineering are our top three majors at New Mexico Tech. We also have um, our College of Arts and Sciences program. Um, they are very hands-on. You can study anything from environmental all the way to medical programs and everything in between. Um, we do have pre-professional programs and a lot of different science options um, for pre-vet and pre-med. And then our physics department is ranked number one in the country. We're actually only one of five universities in the entire country that offers astrophysics and atmospheric physics. So our direct cost um, with tuition and fees, New Mexico residents, I point that out because we do have scholarship opportunities for students to receive in state tuition is a little under 8,500. Um, out of state tuition is a little over 24 thousand and then um, total cost per year kind of can fluctuate you can definitely cut off about two thousand dollars off those costs um, just because room and board is worst case scenario that's factoring in our highest meal plan as well as our apartment style dorms on campus 
We have first time freshman scholarships. They are all merit based. So according to GPA and test scores, we do stack these first time freshman scholarships on top of any of our out of state scholarships. So a lot of our students at New Mexico Tech will graduate with zero to little debt. Um, also, 86% of our students will have jobs before they even graduate and that jumps up to 93% um, six months after graduation. And then if you are interested in visiting with us, you can come to campus. We also have virtual options um, just to chat more with us. Our application is still open for seniors and it's actually open for juniors to apply. I will throw my contact information into the chat. So if you have any questions for me, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. And again, we mentioned the chat take a look at that for the information being sent your way from the representatives. If you have any questions, use the Q&A button. Up next, we will hear from Northeastern State University. Hello everybody, my name is J.M. Goinksnick. I am a university representative, diversity focus for Northeastern State University. We are located in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, which is in the Northeast portion of the state. Uh, it's also known as Green Country. Okay, we're the oldest institution of higher education in the state of Oklahoma. We had our beginnings as a Cherokee female seminary uh, post-Civil War. Uh, we've been at our current location since 1889. Uh, the state took it over in 1909. And uh, so we've been in existence since the statehood, pre-statehood. We have three campuses. The main campus of Tahlequah is where all the freshmen will start their journey. Uh, our housing athletics programs are all started here. All your general education classes will be at Telqua. Uh, Muskogee is about 30 minutes away. Uh, it's our allied health campus, so it can nursing health uh, organization administration, speech and language pathology will be at Muskogee. Uh, Broken Arrow is just an extenuation of our campus here. So all of our colleges um, will definitely be up there. Uh, it's, it's kind of geared toward Tulsa market for coming uh, students coming back to finish. Fourth largest institution in Oklahoma, one of the most affordable in uh, Oklahoma as well, a total enrollment of 7,500. We have about 5,500 in our undergraduate programs and about 2,000 in our master's programs. Uh, 18 to one student faculty ratio. Um, you've been hearing a lot about this ratio here. It really enhances your overall experience, uh, really gets thousands of professors to know you on a first name basis, and it really helps you to start uh, building those relationships because you never know uh, you know, those relationships, you can get letters of recommendation for internships, scholarships, or jobs. So um, take the time to visit your professors. Uh, we have 58 undergraduate degrees, 26 master's degrees, and the only college of optometry in the state of Oklahoma. There's only 23 schools of optometry across the country, and we have the only one here. Uh, we do a fantastic job of, uh, you know, of uh, developing doctors of uh, optometry here. So we are a NCAA Division II athletic program. Uh, Rowdy is our mascot here, and we are the River Hawks. Snapshots here. Um, like I said, we have 58 different majors. If you're unsure of what you would like to study, we do have this assessment here. It's about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, just a few likes and dislikes, and it'll uh, suggest some majors that we offer here at NSU. This is Seminary Hall. This is the original building that was built. Um, 1868, they started the construction of it, and it was built in 1888, was the final building, uh, the final uh, date of opening, I'm sorry. This is Sequoia, he is the father of our Cherokee syllabary. Uh, we are home to two federally recognized tribes, the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma and the United Ketuwa Band of Cherokees in Oklahoma. Here's our degree programs that we offer, College of Business Technology, Accounting is really popular. Um, Health Organization Administration. We are actually uh, one of the top schools in the nation for this program. Um, College of Education, we started as uh, a school of education was the original curriculum. And so we have a pretty good footprint across the state of uh, stocking high schools, junior highs and elementary schools with teachers, counselors and administrators. College of Liberal Arts, um, you know, we are the home of the Cherokee Nation. So we do offer Cherokee studies, Cherokee language, and Cherokee education. So if you are a member of a federally recognized tribe, you are eligible for in-state tuition as well um, to come and study. 
our average attendance costs is fifteen thousand seven hundred and five dollars for in state, and this includes everything tuition fees, books, and supplies in your room and board. And here's the out of state fees. We do have scholarships that we offer on um, some of the early freshman scholarship deadlines. Uh, it's December 1st, our freshman honors, February 1st, PLC, February 1st. Um, freshman general scholarship will close on March 1. You fill out one application and you'll be eligible for five different scholarships with the freshman scholarship award. You fill out the FAFSA, here is our FAFSA code. And have your information sent to our student financial office. Quick listing of our scholarships that we offer, merit-based. You have quad state scholarships for the uh, states that are surrounding the state of Oklahoma. And as I mentioned, if you are a member of a federally recognized tribe, you will be eligible for in-state tuition. All students staying on campus are required to cover to carry a meal plan. A little breakdown of our meal plans here. A breakdown of our housing costs. We have tons of resources available for the students here. A little bit breakdown of our diversity. We are the highest. We have the highest enrollment of Native Americans for any public four-year university in the country, and we also grant the highest number of bachelor's degrees. Um, it's really beautiful here, Lake Tim Killer, Illinois River. Uh, a lot of hiking and fun things to do outside. So I'll put the link to the view book and you are able to see that as well as my information. And here's where we are located in the Northeast section, about an hour from Tulsa, about two and a half hours or so from Oklahoma City. Thank you and appreciate you for visiting with us. Go Hawks. Thank you very much. And I'll mention the chat again to look for information coming to you from the reps. Also going to invite all of our representatives to uh, come back on camera and turn on their microphones. I get to play talk show host in the remaining eight minutes or so that we have in this session and get a little more information out of everyone and that can be helpful besides just the uh, six minute presentations about each of their schools. So the first question we'll have you answer in the same order that you presented. The first question I have is what one piece of advice would you give someone going through the college search process right now? We'll start with the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Wow, I think that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, I, I think the best piece of advice I would give a student is uh, don't, don't be afraid to reach out to us. I, I think you folks heard from six fabulous colleges here today to, who's really eager to engage with you. Um, I think a lot of us on the college rep side, we're, we're waiting to speak with students and just wanting to engage with you. So if you do have any questions, don't hold it in. Um, feel free to reach out to us. We promise we're not scary or anything like that. We're here to help you out to make your best college decision. Um, but that would be the best piece of advice I would give. University of Nevada, Reno. I would say come up with questions like, uh, what are the top two most important things you need from a university? What are you looking for in a university? Questions like that will allow you to not only look at a college and say, okay, they have the type of program I want. I think look beyond that if you look at the type of community they're in, the diversity they're offering, the clubs you can get engaged in, maybe what the professors are like, that's really gonna tell you what you want from university. It's so much more than just the programs and the research, it's beyond that. So ask questions like that for yourself when you're looking. Kansas State University. Yeah, so everyone has said a lot of really great things. And another thing I would recommend is getting to visit campus if you can. A lot of the times when I speak to my students and they tell me that they're coming to K-State, I ask what are some big factors? And one of them is they visited campus and had that feeling, that gut feeling of this is where I'm meant to be. But also make sure that you're visiting a lot of campuses if you can, keep your options open. Because even me just today, I've gotten to learn a lot about all of these universities and they all have a lot of different things and opportunities that you guys can take advantage of in choosing your perfect fit. New Mexico State. I think the advice that I would give is that there are so many different schools out there, um, over 5,000 accredited colleges, universities, um, training vocational programs for students out, out of high school. And what is a fit for your friend or a family member might not be the right fit for you. Um, I think a lot of students kind of look their, their peer group um, and kind of follow their lead when you might really be happier in a different place. And it's, it's such an exciting time for you. So now's the time to 
um, you know, really kind of maybe, maybe open your mind, try new things, um, you know, do your research and, and find that school that's out there that, you know, you can be really happy and successful at. New Mexico Tech. I agree with what everyone said. Um, usually it's go visit campus, but if you don't get the opportunity, at least attend events. We all have virtual events. Um, we also have virtual visits and stuff like that. So definitely do some research, reach out, make sure the school is a good fit for you. Um, we have students all the time that go to other orientations and their first day and just do not like the school because it wasn't a good fit for them and they didn't do their research. So um, that would be my recommendation. Northeastern, Northeastern State. I would say don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, you know, if you don't know, ask. And it's not a sign of weakness or showing that you have a lack of intelligence. It's something that you just don't know. You're ignorant of a subject. There's stuff that I don't know. And I ask constantly. And that's how you learn. So don't be afraid to make mistakes as well because you learn from those mistakes and you grow from those, but realize you made a mistake and try not to do that again. And don't be afraid to step out of your box and uh, uh, try new things. Definitely try new things. Um, you know, we're kind of slotted into our, our social groups in high school, but you don't have to be that person you are in high school, college, you're learning hard skills, you're learning to uh, start your career and get into the field that you want to, but you're also learning about yourself and building your own character as well. So don't be afraid to step out of that and challenge yourself. Great advice from everyone. I have time for another question, and this one is a little more fun. What is your favorite event or tradition on campus? And we'll go back to the, the first presenter, which was University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Um, I, I would say my favorite event on campus or tradition, I would say, is UNLV Premier. Um, it's a big kickoff at the start of our fall semester, and it's kind of that um, background of UNLV and Las Vegas all meshed together where we like to kind of kick off that ending of that first week of school where we invite everybody to come out to enjoy some free food and entertainment and at the ending of the night um, we launch off fireworks and we corral all of our students to fit into the letters of UNLV and by the time that you come out to our events on your senior year you'll end up in that V and about three years ago we bro broke a Guinness World Book of World Records with the most simultaneously lights lit at the same time. <laughs> so it's some fun traditions that we like to incorporate into our um, events on campus. University of Nevada, Reno. Uh, one of my favorite Welcome Week events when I was a student is the running of the wolves. And the running of the wolves happens during the first football game of the season. And normally that's essentially the first week of school. So you've moved into the residence halls, You've probably had your first set of classes. You may or may not know anyone besides your roommate and a few people in your hall. And you, maybe like your RA or someone takes you to the stadium and you're waiting in a line, you get a free t-shirt. And then before the kickoff of the game, you get to rush onto the field. And I did it, I ended up doing it my sophomore year. Most people do it their freshman year, but you can do it as many times as you want, fun fact. And you rushed onto the field and it was the slow-mo, music and you know people have their phones out they're videoing it it's really fun especially some people have their families who come and watch them it's a really great moment and then you sit in the student section and hopefully we win the first game and it's a really great time. Kansas State University. One of my favorite things to do in, in my undergrad was go to our football games uh, we're a big football school and something that we do is called the Wabash Wabash Cannonball and it's a tradition that we do, all the students line up. If you ever Google it, it looks just like a sea of purple moving back and forth. Um, but fun fact about that song, um, back in like the beginning of school, there was a fire in one of our halls and the Wabash was one of the, was the only um, surviving piece of music. And so we kind of claim it as our second fight song. New Mexico State. Um, one thing I really like is what we have is called first year walk and it's for all first year students. We have a big pep rally in our Pan Am Center, which is our big basketball um, arena. And then students basically, it's like a parade around across campus where they have marching band, cheerleaders, um, Pistol Pete, who's our mascot, and people come out of classrooms, offices, and it's basically welcome, welcoming the new students to campus. So it's kind of like a fun parade. And then when you graduate, you do the same thing in reverse. So it's kind of a nice welcome to the campus and then we're sending you out into the world. So it's just a really nice tradition. New Mexico Tech. 
So mine would be what we call 49ers and that's our homecoming week. Students actually get Thursday and Friday off. Um, on Friday, that big mountain behind me, they do have a hike. Um, you can hike it leisurely or you can join the race and they um, hike up the mountain with 50 pound bags of limestone to paint the M. And then they have a huge barbecue, lots of events during the week. Um, the reason why it's special is because you can't just hike the M mountain anytime. It's actually, you have to have clearance because that's where we do all of our explosives research. So they blow up a lot of stuff behind there. So that's one of my favorite traditions. Northeastern state. My favorite tradition is our freshman coin walk. Uh, every incoming freshman um, will receive a coin and the uh, Faculty and staff, we all line the sidewalk, went up to Seminary Hall, and freshmen walk through there, receive their coin at the end, and you carry this, this coin for your four years here, and upon graduation, you give that coin back to a uh, faculty member, a staff member that really helped you along um, with, your, with your journey here. So it really draws everybody together and you know, gives pride to the, the faculty and staff that received those coins from those students. Well, thank you all for sharing your fun campus traditions and your advice and all of the information about each of your schools. I want to thank our attendees for joining us. When you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. And early next week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash SSDA. Once again, I want to thank all of our presenters for all of the information that they shared today. And I want to thank you all for joining us. Have a great rest of your Thursday. Take care.